Two Gals Obsessed with True Crime. This is the story of two girls, Karen and Georgia, who worked in LA's impossibly dynamic entertainment industry of the 2010s. They met at a Halloween party and quickly found one topic they could not stop discussing. Crime. Both were thrilled to find someone who shared their obsession, a passion they could talk about for hours. On a day celebrating the return of the dead, the two girls discovered their mutual fascination with criminal intrigue. Georgia has been addicted to fear since childhood, and popular culture is to blame. In the 80s, terrifying movies rolled out at the speed of light, with no adults to supervise what their kids were watching. It gave children nightmares, yet they couldn't stop watching them. From Stephen King's books to Ted Bundy's biography, Georgia got her hands on increasingly scarier stuff every time. Luckily, no one in her family shamed her for her obsession with true crime. If you have a common interest, your passion will always resonate. Then she met Karen, another fan of true crime. They talked non-stop about their favorite cases and a then-new HBO series, The Staircase, following a murderer's trial. They decided to start their own true crime podcast. The brainstorming came, and the format was born. Every episode would feature a murder story that one would tell the other. Fast forward to two months later, the podcast was a hit. Now Karen and Georgia have hundreds of episodes and millions of listeners as obsessed with true crime as they are. So many people around the world share their fascination, equally puzzled and enchanted by the process of unraveling these mysteries. Now, uncover the journeys of Georgia and Karen, sharing the horrors and beauty of their own lives. Key point two, forget politeness. Do you recall a time when someone behaved poorly and you responded with politeness instead of standing up for yourself? Perhaps later, you felt frustrated with yourself for not expressing your true feelings. All little girls are taught to be polite, nice, and friendly. Fast forward to years later, and these grown women put everyone first at the expense of their own well-being. Embrace your own needs and desires instead of fulfilling others' expectations. Georgia knows what it's like. She grew up with a single mother who was trying to date after a divorce. She saw her mom become a different person in the presence of a man, desperate, submissive, and accommodating. Georgia went straight into the same behavior at school, playing a role in exchange for a man's affection. Finally, she ran away from the suburban gender trap of Orange County and moved to L.A. That's when she learned that disregarding politeness can become a matter of life or death. Lawrence, a professional photographer, was one of her regulars when Georgia waited tables in a diner. He seemed cool and reputable, so she instantly accepted his photoshoot offer. It only hit her what a huge red flag it was minutes later, driving up the highway alone in his car to a remote area. In a panic, she recalled a story of innocent Linda Sobeck. She was just a model who made the wrong decision to travel to a secluded spot with a photographer, where she was raped and murdered. Was the same waiting for her? The photo shoot started, and then came the moment. Lawrence asked her to take her top off. It was the polite girl in her who obliged. She long victim blamed herself for her stupid mistake. Until it hit her, none of these women, whether she or Linda, were to blame for what happened to them. For Karen, her mom was the perfect example of politeness. She was a warrior, unafraid to stand up for herself, debate, and speak her mind. Although she quickly lost herself to Alzheimer's, her life was a victory. She didn't care what other people thought and decided the rules she played by. We barely get any time on this planet. Do not spend it pleasing other people. Live life exactly how you want to live it so you can love the life you make for yourself. Karen Kilgariff Key point three, light at the end of the tunnel. Both Georgia and Karen know what it feels like to live in a blackout, whether it's about losing yourself in partying, alcohol, or drugs. For most of their youth, they ran away into a cool, crazy world only to realize they had to face reality and return. And Karen, it was all about the loss of control. What seemed like the most incredible fun at first turned out to be less and less pretty with age. In 1996, she was on speed for several months, becoming chronically sleepless and paranoid. Karen started using the drug to lose weight and increase her chances of getting cast for television shows in the pretty L.A. world. Ironically, she missed castings and rehearsals because she felt terrible. There she was, hitting the lowest point in her life. Suddenly, her life consisted of nothing but surface-level, transient relationships. Getting off drugs, she couldn't understand how to form relationships. All this time, Karen was too afraid to face herself and how bad she was at connecting with others. She realized that she had to learn how to care for herself and start anew in understanding how to relate to those around her. Substance abuse prevents us from being vulnerable and forming real intimacy with other people. Georgia knew it like no one else. Before she turned 13, she regularly smoked cigarettes, pot, and meth. Her friends were from equally broken homes like hers. Turning into juvenile rascals was their only way to attract attention. Eventually, she got caught and received an ultimatum. Go to rehab or be arrested. Do you think she quit after that? She circled back with an even bigger dedication to hide it better until someone stopped her, Ray Bradbury. His The Martian Chronicles became Georgia's turning point. 
Reading of Humanity Conquering Space made her realize the world is much more than her little suburban reality of Orange County. She could choose her path and build the future however she wanted, not what others expected her to do. Georgia was so grateful to the writer that she drove to Los Angeles to see his lecture and give him a personal letter, and he replied with a copy of his book inscribed with a single word, Onward. It gave her hope. She was now a 16-year-old who had finally got it together, excited about what awaited. Key point four, how to get away from a cult. Broken and dependent, we are especially vulnerable to all things cultish. And L.A. had just the perfect setting for desperate, lonely young people looking for answers. A sanctuary of plastic surgery, the promise of success, and endless parties, this city was all about delusion for Karen. So many opportunities seemed to pass her by. There was always someone hotter, prettier, or smarter than she was. And just like that, she started losing hope. Karen got involved with Scientology. They made it really easy to join, convincing hopeless L.A. newcomers they had the answer to all their problems. The circle seemed to include so many influential people and celebrities, too. This was her chance to make the right friendships. Before long, Karen realized that her inner circle had expanded to include dozens of people, but the cost was high. She found herself broke and cut off from her family. Her worries kept coming, and she realized that there was no answer. She had to find one herself in that desperate L.A. world. Never trust anyone trying to cut you off from your friends and family. They are your essential support system. Everyone preached another cult in L.A., the cult of perfect, as Karen called it. Its world comprises supermodels and impossible standards an ordinary human could never reach. Since she was 13, Karen always felt the ick of imperfection. There was always something to fix, her body, face, or smile. Deep down, it was simply the fear of showing up as an imperfect, vulnerable human being. We run around making ourselves miserable and insane trying to be the best one, when we should really be aiming to become our true selves. Karen Kilgriff and Georgia Hartstark Georgia had another form of obsession. She went through a phase of kleptomania. For a child whose family barely made ends meet, it was a way of owning cool stuff her parents could never afford. On top of that, she became a rebellious teenager, smoking cigarettes and stealing. She stopped the day she got caught by a secret shopper. The humiliation was unbearable. Did you know? No matter how bad your situation is, there's always someone who can help out. It was too late for people who followed their cult leader in the Jonestown Massacre and drank poison together. What if they just reached out to someone who could help? Key point five. You don't have to do it all on your own. Karen and Georgia have become huge advocates for therapy. Georgia has been in therapy since she was six, as a child traumatized by her parents' divorce. She cried for hours and locked herself in her closet. Obvious red flag for her mom, who instantly signed her up for therapy. It was such a comforting feeling for Georgia to cry openly to a therapist who responded so empathetically. That inspiring experience marked the beginning of her 30-year-long therapy journey. Throughout this, she learned a few essential lessons along the way. 1. Exercise compassion for yourself. Since childhood, we learn to be mean and critical of ourselves. Instead, be the first person to give yourself empathy that could be lacking from others. 2. Diagnosis is neither troublesome nor a protective barrier. It merely shows you the direction to your relief. Try to thrive within this diagnosis and not use it as an excuse. 3. Your perfect therapist is out there. Don't despair if you don't find the right one immediately. Give it a few tries, and you'll certainly find a therapist you will feel comfortable with and confide in. 4. Just do it. Don't wait for motivation to show up. Just do your best every single day. 5. Challenge your negative thoughts. Instill balance with positive ones. 6. Whatever you feel, whatever situation you find yourself in, remember, it's okay. Karen avoided therapy for years. However, she learned many self-care lessons along the way, facing the harsh reality she was trying to escape. So, here's her practical guide on how to get better. 1. Take responsibility for your own life. Stop shifting the blame onto others and own up to your mistakes. 2. Don't share your problems with everyone you meet. Only confide in people who care about you. And 3. Listen to the harshest truths your closest ones have to tell you. Take their message and don't hate the messenger. Karen remembers how head over heels she was over some guy she couldn't shut up about to her friend. She kept talking and talking until her friend slammed the car brakes and exploded. Stop talking about him. He doesn't care about you. Let it go. For Karen, it became the most terrifying yet helpful thing anyone said to her. Friendships wake us to what we don't see and feed our souls with genuine human connections and mutual care. Key point six, finding and trusting your path. Finding the direction you want to go is not hard, but staying on that path is. Karen knew there had to be more to life than doing an internship at college and finding a conventional job, so she quit. Her parents cut her off. It was time to be broke and panic. Instead, Karen started following the path she always wanted, to do comedy. It seemed easy. Start, do a bunch of club shows, and become famous, right? 
Well, it took her 14 years to get a more or less stable career path in show business. On top of that, everyone close to her judged her career choice along the way, doubting she could ever make it. According to them, she should have a real job, paying good money and allowing for a safety net. Despite that, Karen quickly learned to ignore their nagging advice and trusted the path she chose for herself. Don't let other people's fears stand in your way. Remember to listen to your gut and follow your own course. However, it was not a pretty story. There were countless moments of being totally broke, lost, and having no next step to follow. In a moment of desperation, Karen called her father for another loan. It's time to get real with life, kiddo, he said. At that very moment, she knew he was wrong. She got her first writing job a couple of months later. George's journey had moments of desperation, too. She dreamed about having her own money ever since she was a kid, a simple and tangible dream. She sifted through jobs until she found herself at a boring billion-dollar corporation working as a receptionist, hating her life. That was it. I would work here for the rest of my life and drink my troubles away with equally unhappy people every night, she thought. To get rid of the stagnation, she returned to the passion she had as a child, blogging. She found what brought her joy and relief, doing what she loved. And here she is, writing a book. Georgia could go into self-doubt and question why she deserves this right in the first place. But now she knows. Bigger fools than her have published a book. Bigger fools found rewarding jobs without a college education. So why not her, too? Conclusion Karen and Georgia are two women whose life paths crossed, united in their passion for true crime. Together, they initiated a creative union based on their passions. They could never tire of talking about the most mysterious crime cases and found an audience as interested and obsessed as they were. In no way were they experts in the topics they discussed. They were only experts in their own life experiences. Their excitement and ability to show up as their imperfect selves echoed with millions of people. Recounting the stories of those crimes, they never stopped questioning. What do we do to stop it from happening again? What are the red flags we're missing as a society? They carefully analyzed numerous stories for signs and patterns, seeking to provide safety advice for their audience. However, some critics argued that their approach could inadvertently lead to victim blaming. One thing was true. If the whole world is a forest, we can't escape it. It is filled with dangers and predators. Those who suffered from it were in no way responsible and careless. It's because someone chose to attack them. But we can do our best to see reality and ensure our safety as we go through it. Try this. Learn to define your needs and set healthy boundaries with others instead of pleasing them to the detriment of your well-being. If you had challenging experiences, self-care should be your thing. Learn to take care of yourself and recovery will follow. Seek advice from licensed therapists if you've hit a wall. Having someone to support and accept you in your journey is always good. Family and friends are your support system. Prioritize the quality of human connection over the number of people in your life.